kids and ones deciding to join me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Late night, early morning, Christmas, lots of fun. Um, I was born and raised in Minnesota, and my beautiful husband was born and raised here in Seoul. And no, we did not meet in Minnesota, and no, we did not meet in Seoul, uh, which is always the assumption. Uh, both of us were, there we go, thank you, uh, were working internationally. So we were both living in Malaysia, and we met in Malaysia, and uh, met and got <coughs> married and had Marina in Malaysia, and then really decided that we needed to move back to Minnesota so that Michael could uh, pursue his dream and become a music teacher. And so four years of just kind of a lot of grueling work as he did, he was a full-time college student and he did classes during the winter and the summer and um, just <laughs> a lot of extra work and I was teaching full-time and, uh, and Warren joined us so it was a very busy four years and we were June of this year looking forward to the summer because it was going to be a quiet summer. Um, it was going to be a summer where we could rest and relax and my husband was not going to do any schoolwork for the first time in the summer and uh, things were looking very good, you know, and we just finished the year and uh, many of you are teachers, you know that push to the end where you're like, oh my word, we just need June. Uh, and June came and about a week after school, uh, ended, uh, we ended up in the ER. And Michael had intense stomach pain, uh, and they gave him morphine, and it didn't help. And they gave him more morphine, and he's like, Woo, I'm very happy now. Um, <laughs> and it helped a little bit uh, for a short time. And the doctors were like, Well, we know this and this is working, but we don't know a lot of things, and so why don't you come in and do more tests? And so a few weeks, and more tests came in. And the doctor called us and said, well, the test results are in. Come in and talk to us. <laughs> Never a good thing, right? When they don't say the results over the phone. And uh, exactly that. We went in, and he said, uh, the doctor said, Michael has stomach cancer. And our restful summer definitely went out the window. And uh, tests began to try and figure out okay, where are we in it? How much is it? What summer, what, uh, where are we, you know, in the stage? Uh, and how bad is it? Uh, research began on stomach cancer. What happens with it? What stages is it? How, you know, how is it treated? And uh, during that research, we found that Korea and Japan are the top in the world for treating stomach cancer. Uh, they're also top in the world for having stomach cancer, so it kind of goes hand in hand, right? You really have a lot of it, so you get really good at treating it, um, and that was the case. And so we thought, okay, we could stay here in America. America does not does a lot of things well, but stomach cancer it doesn't do well. And or we could go to Korea, where as a citizen he could get really good health care. Um, and so we went back and forth, and that's a big deal <laughs> to move. And uh, June and July, as it went through, we watched Michael's health just decline. He could no longer eat. Um, he was having a lot of pain. Uh, he was on stronger and stronger and stronger pain medicine, um, higher and higher narcotics. And we realized if we didn't move him soon, we weren't going to be able to move him. Like, he just was not going to be able to fly. And so the end of July, um, the end of the July, we made that decision to come to Korea. And uh, it was one of those, okay, we really need to do it. Let's buy the tickets. And three days later, Michael and I were on a plane. And for those of you who have moved internationally, three days is not long enough. <laughs> um, uh, the kids stayed with my parents. So it was just he and I um, traveling. I didn't think in his condition I could get all three of them here. Um, and so we made it to Korea. And at that point, we had really given up all security, right? We had given up the cars were sold, the house was to be sold. I quit my job. I didn't have a job here in Korea. Um, you know, Michael had given up his dream of becoming a teacher. He was six credits away from an edu education major. Um, God blessed, and he was able to graduate with a music major uh, and a degree, but not not that full education degree. And so there was a lot of uncertainty. We didn't know, we knew, we thought at the time that we were at stage two 
So we were hoping that we would just come, do surgery, things would, would settle. However, we got here, um, and um, well, as we were doing that traveling, and that initial questioning of why, why us, why this, why this disease, why this timing, you know, wouldn't it have been better if you just waited a little longer, God? Couldn't we have done it at a different time? Um, you know, Michael's so young, and we're young, and things were just going right. And uh, we, we struggled and we prayed a lot. And we came down to kind of three things, um, really, that we chose God's will for our life, no matter what. And we firmly believed that whatever he decided was going to be the best, no matter what, no matter how hard and no matter how difficult it was to walk through, that he would take us through it and it would be for the best. And we wanted to do this in a way that gave God glory because we wanted to make choices that would allow his glory to shine through and not us because we certainly couldn't do this on our own. Um, and through it all, this peace that we were going to be taken care of and that as all security was just taken away, that we had that choice to choose him and to choose who he was. And, and he was so very real during that time as everything got taken away. Uh, there really was nothing else to turn to but him. And uh, we got here to Korea. And it's the end of July, within a day, I think two days, I don't know, jet lag, right? Who remembers those days? <laughs> um, we were in the hospital here in Korea, and uh, we spent essentially all of August, Michael and I, in the hospital. Um, and, of course, we brought all the tests with us from Minnesota, but, you know, they had to redo most of them. <laughs> um, and essentially it was good that they did, because in the three weeks interim between when we did the test in Minnesota and when we got here, it had changed, and we were now dealing with stage four. Not only stage four, but inoperable stage four. So it had gone outside of his stomach to, apparently, I didn't, you learn so much when you go through this. We have a, a blanket kind of covering our stomach, and so it had gone inside of that, and lots of little tiny dots. And uh, so it was essentially too small to be taken out, um, and so it was not something to be operated on. And the chances were looking very bad at that point. Uh, even here, the survival rates are very, very low. And Michael's condition was very bad, and so they said, okay, well, let's start chemotherapy and see if we can, you know, that's the traditional way to do it. And um, again, things were like, okay, we're gonna do this, not looking good, but we, we did it. Um, let's start it, let's do the chemotherapy, let's try. And five days into the chemotherapy, uh, Michael threw up a massive amount of blood and collapsed in front of me. Uh, we were home at the time. And so we rushed him to the hospital. Uh, he stabilized and everything was good. Um, over the next week, he did it uh, two more times, lost a massive amount of blood. And uh, from everything that I could research and what the doctors were telling us, it was really linked to the chemotherapy. It doesn't happen very often in many people, but in this case, he was having internal bleeding um, because of that. And the doctor said, well, let's go ahead and we'll just continue doing this. And Michael and I looked at him and said, no. <laughs> no, we are not going to continue doing this because if we have only a year left, we are not going to spend that year miserable, horribly sick, going downhill in a hospital. Um, and so, again, lots of prayer. Um, just incredible peace in a very, very difficult situation where lots of people were saying, no, you listen to the doctors, and no, stay here in the hospital. Uh, we left the hospital, and we went to a clinic here in Korea that does a lot of Eastern medicine and Western medicine as well, kind of bridges that too. And uh, they started, Michael, on some uh, treatments and some things to help really boost his immune system and just get him healthier to begin with. Uh, and then to fight the cancer. And so we started there the end of August, early September, and just have slowly watched him improve and get better and feel better and get better. And as of beginning of November, we did our last uh, CT scan and um, we've stopped the cancer from growing. 
So it's held where it was in July, uh, which is huge. I mean, because it was moving at an incredibly fast and very aggressive rate um, to begin there. And uh, from there, we're hoping now to be able to continue to shrink it and to, to bring it back down. Um, and he's able to eat again. He's able to function for the most part. We still have bad days and, and bad times, but they're fewer and farther between, and just overall health is better. But we have learned so much <laughs> over the last six months. And uh, next week, it'll be uh, six months since we've heard. And uh, ironically, it'll be six months on our seven-year wedding anniversary. Um, but it's been a roller coaster of a six months. And we've just amazed at how God's provided financially and emotionally and, um, and physically as he's improving and getting better. And we come into this Christmas just with a very different perspective on everything. And uh, one of the things that I think has struck both Michael and I is uh, Mary and Joseph and how they had their life very well planned. They were engaged, they were getting married, everything was laid out. And in one day, God changed it all. And uh, a lot of hard and difficult times and good times. And we have had so many good times and good things come from this uh, and growth and just family time. Uh, we've had a lot more, you know, we joked, we. We spent more time together in August than we'd been able to do <laughs> in years, uh, although we wouldn't have picked the hospital. Um, still, as a couple, we had more time uh, together than we'd had in a long time. And uh, we just continue to choose God's will for however long that is and whatever that is. Shh, stop. And, uh, you know, we choose to continue for his glory and whatever that means. And uh, we know that no matter what it is, uh, his choice and his will will be far better than anything we could have planned. And uh, while our plan didn't quite work the way we had anticipated, uh, we know his, his will and his, his plan is significantly better. And the peace that we've had through this has been uh, amazing and very much life-changing. And uh, we continue to... Uh, just enjoy and watch Jesus be very real in our lives as we, everything else has gone away and he's been the important, important person and uh, very real presence in our lives. And we just thank you as a community how much you have meant to us during this time. So thank you.